Hello everyone. So in this video, we're going to take a look at buffering. We're going to summarize within the buffering, and we're also going to merge overlapping, overlapping buffers as well. It's not particularly difficult, but nevertheless, there's a few steps that you have to take. So on this map right now, I've got a map of California, and I've got California cities on the map, and I also have a series of earthquakes on the map as well, which is indicated by these little yellow triangles. Now, there are earthquakes that occur all the time across California. These are only a handful of representative earthquakes, and as a matter of fact, we can open up this attribute table, and when we open up the attribute table, you can see that I've got 19 earthquakes only. They all rank pretty high in Mercalli magnitude. So you can see here they're nine going all the way down to seven. So they're pretty strong earthquakes in terms of Richter scale earthquakes. It looks like we've got sixes and sevens, high fives. So we're just mapping some earthquakes across the state of California. And you'll notice too, the years of these earthquakes date back from the 80s to the early 90s. So they're not even particularly recent, but we're just using them as an example data set. Not a whole lot of information for these earthquakes other than the depth to which they occurred, their location in terms of X and Y, which is latitude and longitude, the number of deaths that occurred because of these earthquakes, and the time of year. So that's the extent of the data we have for earthquakes. We also have California cities. And when I open up the California cities attribute table, then what we have now is a list of 456 cities across the state of California. We've got the name of those cities and we have the population of those cities in the year 2000. So census 2000 for population. And that's gonna become important in a little bit just as well. So what I wanna do on this project is take my earthquakes, buffer a 15 mile radius around the earthquake. Then what I wanna do is determine the amount of people or the population, certainly in the year 2000, that would have been affected by these earthquakes. So we're gonna buffer the earthquake 15 miles for each earthquake. Then what we wanna do is merge the, the cities and the earthquakes to determine the population of people within those buffer zones. So it's not particularly difficult to do a buffer. Let's do that first. So I'm gonna click on the analysis tab and then the tools. And then for here, in my geoprocessing window, I'm gonna enter in buffer. And the first tool that pops up is buffer analysis tools, and that's the one I want. So I'm gonna click on that one. And here my input feature is going to be California earthquakes. Again, I wanna create that 15 mile buffer zone around each of these earthquakes. The distance is 15 and we'll keep linear unit. And we will come down here to this pull down menu and select statute miles. We're gonna keep planar method. You actually have two methods for buffering. One is planar and the other is geodesic. Geodesic is shape preserving and it's really appropriate if you've got a large buffer that takes a long distance, then you wanna save that shape. But for us, we're just using a 15 mile radius, so it's not that big of an issue. So we'll just stick with planar. And now here's the key. In terms of dissolve type, we're actually going to select dissolve all output features into a single feature. Before I do that one though, I'm going to demonstrate what no dissolve does. So let me just keep no dissolve and now I'll click run. And now what ArcGIS Pro is going to do is create that buffer or buffers around each of my earthquakes. And again, you'll notice here, here are the buffers. And if I right click on the attribute table for my new buffer, you're gonna see that I should have 19 points and 19 buffers, and that's exactly what I have. Now, the reason why I don't wanna use this is because if you take a look down here, you'll see that I've got these two buffer zones, they're interlocking, they're overlapping. These three buffer zones are overlapping. These four buffer zones are overlapping. There's two here that are overlapping, there's two here that are overlapping, and these three are overlapping slightly as well. So what I want to do is actually create a buffer, but I want to dissolve everything together 
so that I'm just gonna have one big buffer. And th this is what I mean. So I'm keeping all of this the same. Let me change my output here to seven because I wanna run this again, but now I'm gonna select dissolve all output features into a single feature. And now let's click run. Okay, so now let's get rid of this buffer, the original one that we did. Now let's take a look at California Earthquakes Buffer 7. This was the dissolved one. And you can see here that these buffers are no longer separate. They're all dissolved together. So these two are together, these three are together, these four are together. And in fact, if I right click on the new buffer and take a look at the attribute table, now I just got one giant polygon. I don't really want this either, <laughs> but this is closer to what I want because ultimately what I wanna do is take a look at the population centers within these buffers to determine how many people would have been affected by those earthquakes, certainly within a 15 mile radius. But I don't want this buffer zone here, the original one, because it's not considering the overlap buffers. I don't want this one either because everything is considered one big buffer. So what we need to do is come back to the geoprocessing tool and use another tool. And this one is going to be called multi-part to single part. So let's just enter in multi-part in the geoprocessing tool window. And the first tool that pops up is multi-part to single part. This creates a feature class containing single part features generated by separating multi-part input features. So what we're essentially doing is taking that dissolved buffer, that first one, and now what we're gonna do is all the zones that are not touching anything else will be separated, leaving these zones left behind. So let's click on that tool. The input feature is gonna be buffer seven, which is this one that I just created. And then the output feature class is gonna be called multi-part to single. So let's click run. That was fast. Now let's take a look at this attribute table. So let's close with this one and let's open this one. Now remember, this original buffer had 19 buffers because there's 19 earthquakes on this map. This second buffer dissolved everything together. So we actually had one big buffer. Now this one, let's see what we have here. So let's open up the attribute table. And now what we see are nine independent buffers. So again, all the buffers that have overlapped have now been merged into single buffer zones. Now this is good because now what I can do is summarize all the city populations that are within these buffers to determine what the population is for this entire overlap buffer zone. So now I'm gonna use another tool and this next tool is gonna to be called Summarize Within, and it's gonna be right up here in the front ribbon. In fact, you've got all these tools under the Analysis tab, and these are tools that you might use quite often. And so the tool that I want to use is Summarize Within. So let me click on that. Now, in terms of the input polygon, the input polygon is gonna be that multi-part to single part buffer zone, this one. The input summary features are cities. We're looking for the cities and most importantly we're looking for the populations within those cities. The output feature will just leave it as default, the summarize within. The field that we want to summarize is population and our statistic is going to be sum. So it's the total. So in other words if I've got a buffer zone here with multiple cities it's going to tell me what the populations are for each city and sum them all together. That's it, that's all I need. So now I'll click run. And here it is. So now we're done. Let's turn this guy off. Now if I right click on my summarize within and I look at the attribute table, all that information is there, but now we've also added the population or the sum of population for how many cities were within those buffer areas. So this is what we wanted to do. We simply wanted to determine the population centers within these buffered zones. Now, of course, I can label it. I can right click here on this line item. 
I can click Label. Now you notice I've got some numbers popping up. These numbers are representing the IDs for each of these buffers. So these two buffer, buffers together is one, these three together is two, these four together is three, and so on and so forth. I don't want to label the number of the buffer. What I really want to do is label the population. So let me right click again, go to labeling properties. I always like to work in Python over Arcade, but you can do either one. If we leave it in Arcade, all we need to do is change the expression. Let's get rid of feature.objectID. So I'm just gonna capture it all, press delete, double click on some population 2000 and now apply. And now you'll notice that my label has changed and I've got my population total within these buffer zones is what pops up here on the label. I can't see that particularly well, so I'm gonna change this symbology a little bit. We'll go from Tahoma. I like Calibre a little bit better, so I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna change the size of my font. Let's go to 12 point. Um, in addition to that, let's make it bold, and let's apply. So now I can see the numbers a little bit better. And what I wanna also do is change my symbology here. So we'll just make this a nice black hollow. And so now I can see it really well. So that's it. That's this particular project. We've got these different earthquakes. We know what our population centers are within that 15 mile buffer. You can see down here in LA County, we're at almost 8 million people who, are who would have been affected by those particular earthquakes in the late 80s and early 90s. So that's how you do it. Very simple way to buffer something to then merge overlapped buffers and then to do a summarize within to calculate whatever you want that is within content within those buffer zones. Okay, that's it. Thanks so much. And until next time, bye-bye.